You have to recognize that a lot of the preliminary chemistry in terms of results were determined by dealing with light. Now they found out that light can act as a wave or it can act as a particle. And I think there's a lot of phenomenal demonstrations you can do with light acting as a wave. With, you, with the, something like this, a polarized set of filters, you can see quite a bit. Right now, I have two filters where you're able to see through. That's because of the waves of light are coming like picket fence, they're coming as a wave through picket fences where polarized sheets like this have even intervals in the same direction. But watch what happens as I turn one of the sheets. How'd that turn out? What we're seeing is, as I said, one of these sheets has many thousands of lines just like this, and when the other one is parallel with it, the waves are able to come through. But when you invert one 90 degrees, it blocks out light. Now, that's an interesting observation about light, but you can take it to a much higher level. What we have over here is an overhead. Now, since we're using the overhead camera, we've taken off the lens portion. But what I have here at the bottom is a sheet of polarized material that has initially been cut off of this pattern. And once you take that and cut it, like using a paper cutter, you take all those pie wedges and put them together into, in a sense, a pie, and you tape them together. So you still might be able to see some tape there. But what we've got is a series of polarized wedges, and I have on top another polarized filter. So let's turn it on. What do you see? Let's go ahead and pour some corn syrup in there. This is just caro corn syrup. What you have to recognize is that caro corn syrup is a sugar that is going to be an optically active sugar. Let's see what happens. As I pour it in, the depth of the sugar increases. And it's interacting with the light that's coming through. Were you able to see the pattern? There's a pattern right there that as the optical path of the sugar changed, it was refracting the light at different patterns. And so what you saw is the white light, which is composed of all colors, being broken up. And so you saw a rainbow of light going around in a particular pattern. And so this concept can be used for many, many different observations. If you take sugars, as I said, some of them optically rotate light one direction, some optically rotate light the other direction. This is where you get your D or L variety. And so you could take, by enzymes, you could take sugars and change it into high fructose corn syrup. Or another pattern you might do, if you want to analyze wines or other situations that have sugars, you wouldn't use a device like this, but you'd use a much more detailed device called a polarimeter. In fact, I have an older book here from the United States Department of Commerce, which is a book of standards on polarimetry, which is the instrumentation using this polarized light, saccharimetry, where they're analyzing the sugars, and they're just put it in terms of all the sugars. And so a detailed book like this has a lot of 
different observations that they can make about the different types of sugars. And they might use this in terms of analyzing wines or sugars in terms of the pop or soda. Let me just take this off. and take this out. And as you can see, is it dark or not? Okay. What we're going to do is, as I pour the sugar, the caro syrup in here, You can see that the colors are coming through in different levels. Please be very careful of the caro syrup. It is quite messy. You'll want to wipe and wash out the beakers initially, right away. You could do other experiments like with Petri dishes. This is a plastic Petri dish. Can you see some colors there as I rotate it? It's an interesting situation here where you're seeing the plastic Petri dish showing a crystalline pattern. If you would try a glass Petri dish, it would not show that kind of pattern because the glass is an amorphous solid, but the plastic Petri dish shows some crystallinity. You can do other demonstrations where you have a piece of plexiglass that's open at one end where you can do this and squeeze it. Can you see some stress lines that are forming? You can see right there that this is a simplistic way that they might analyze stress patterns in particular metals. Or, I love this. This is just a piece of cellophane tape with multiple layers of cheap tape. And you can see as you rotate it, you get a 70s pattern. Boy, we could be playing some disco music. But once again, you're giving the student an opportunity to see how light interacts and hopefully then where they can use these type of light properties in analysis in simple chemical situations. So think about including something like this in your curriculum.